Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a little update to a video I did a few months ago and I made that video like right when I got my Cricut like I had taken it out of the box and played with it for hours and I was just learning like really quickly how to use it but since then I have learned a lot more and I've made a lot of mistakes and wasted a lot of paper and ink but I have learned from my mistakes and I want to share that with you so that you don't waste your paper and ink. And I guess it's really not a waste because I learned a lot from it. So if you're interested in learning how to use the print then cut feature on Cricut to make your own stickers, keep watching. So I thought I'd show you guys really quickly um, how I add the border around my images. So certain stickers that you're going to make, you're not going to need a border around it, but Something else that I learned is you can't you can't cut out something like this that's just outlines. It needs a border to cut around it. Most stickers that you have, probably stickers you've ordered, um, have a white border around them. So you're kind of used to that. A white or a black or whatever kind of border, but white is kind of the standard. And I just want to show you how I do it. So this is in Photoshop. This is how I know how to do it. This is what works for me. So I have my design here and it's on a transparent background. And all I'm going to do is go over here to the Layers panel and click the FX button and Stroke. Stroke is Photoshop's terminology for a border. And you can see here that it adds a border. You can choose your color. You can choose if you want the stroke to be on the outside, the inside, which we don't want for this, or the center. We want outside. And for size, you know, I really recommend just kind of eyeballing it. Nothing is going to be like universal. You won't be able to just like say, okay, always set the stroke at 29 because it's just going to depend on the design that you have. But I want to show you something that I've been doing lately that has worked really, really well for me for getting a nice clean border. So I'm going to make the border bigger than I want it to be. So I'm just going to put it all like all the way up here. Okay. Then I'm going to hit okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to hit, I'm going to right click, duplicate layer. I know there's a shortcut, but I'm just trying to make it easy and hit okay. Then what I'm going to do is select both of these layers, right click and hit merge layers. And now I have this one layer that is here with no effects. The stroke is just kind of permanently on there. And now what I'm going to do is go to the quick selection tool and select this design stroke and all. Now we're going to go up here to select, modify, contract. This is something, again, you're just going to have to play with the numbers, but I'm going to try 20 and you can see what it does. So basically what it does is it takes your selection and instead of growing it, it shrinks it down. So what I like to do is I like to shrink the selection and then I like to go again here to Select, modify, and smooth. And then I go select, inverse, control X to remove the excess. And I repeat that pattern over and over. So I'm really just trying to get a nice smooth outline. So I'm going to do smooth again. I'm going to contract again. Inverse. Control X, or you can hit delete. There's a lot of different things you can do. You can erase it, but Control X to cut it just really is the easiest way to do it. And I'm just going to keep repeating this, and I really like it because it, um, it really just kind of smooths out that border. Sometimes you do a border on a design, and it's just really kind of like choppy around the edges. And I just really like to smooth it out with this method. And then what I like to do, since the background is transparent, I like to add another layer and fill that layer just with a color. I'm gonna drag it behind so I can see. And then I can kind of see what my border looks like. So I can see that I still want to smooth it out because there's a couple edges that are kind of jagged here. And you can obviously manually go in with the eraser and do this. Um, I just find this to be a little more precise. And you can see how it kind of smooths those edges. I'm going to do that one more time. And this is all like optional. You can just add the stroke and move on. I'm just very 
particular about it. <laughs> so I just really like to uh, make sure it is up to snuff for my preferences. I'm going to contract just a little bit more. Because I can always go in and add later. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And now that the actual selection is smoothed out, I'm going to add just a little bit more to get it right where I want it. And that looks good to me. And now I'm going to delete the colored layer and then we have our design with the stroke. And then you just want to make sure you save this as a PNG so you can go to file, export, export as. Just make sure you select PNG and have the transparency box selected. That's all you need to do. Hit export, save it wherever you want on your computer, and you are good to go to upload this to Cricut Design Space. All right, so we are here in the Cricut Design Space. This is where you make all your stuff with your Cricut. And you can see all my projects here, but we're gonna ignore that. We're gonna just go here and click New Project. Now, the first thing you wanna do um, something I learned early on from watching other, you know, people on YouTube and TikTok is learning not to waste your sticker paper. So once you use sticker paper, you can't really reuse it. So don't print just like one sticker at a time, print a whole bunch of them. So what you want to do is go to shapes and click on square. And it's going to bring up this gray box. Then you're going to go up here where it has size, click the little lock button to unlock it. And you're going to do 6.75 width and 9.25 height. And this is going to make a box that looks like this. You're going to hit the lock again, kind of optional, but just to make sure you don't uh, mess up the proportions by accident. So this is the maximum size that the Cricut will allow. And that's why we do this, because we don't want to waste our sticker paper. And so now we are going to upload our design. So I have a bunch already uploaded here. So I'm just going to click on a couple that I have already uploaded. I'll do this one and this one. Okay. Then we just want to use the little arrow here in the corner to resize. And now what you want to do is choose what size you want your stickers to be. So obviously, you know, you have your ruler up here, which makes it very easy to determine, you know, the size of your design. So sometimes it can be hard to, to kind of visualize what this is going to look like printed. Something I recommend is if you're not sure, like, I know you can see the ruler on the screen and you can see it, but it's just kind of hard to visualize, especially if you're planning on putting your sticker on a specific item and you need it to fit. Something that you can do is when we go and we actually hit make it and we go through the whole process, just use regular cheap paper just to kind of like print it out and see what it's actually going to look like. And then you can hit print again on your sticker paper. Um, but that will definitely save you some paper because sometimes it can be hard to determine how it's actually going to look once you print it as far as sizing goes. So I'm going to do around, around three inches. I'm going to right click duplicate and do another one. So what you can do is you can hold down the shift key and click on both of these to select them both. You can also do this over here on the right. And what you want to do is go up here to align and then center vertically. And this just makes sure that everything is lined up. So let me put it off center so you can see how it works. So it just kind of lines everything up. And then for this, I know I wanted to print a couple smaller ones of this. So I'm going to right click duplicate. And I'm going to try to fit three on this row. Make sure there's enough space in between the design so the machine has room to cut. And I'm going to do the same thing. Hold down shift to select them all. Align. Center vertically. Okay. And then I just want to print a couple more of these. So I'm going to select them both and hit duplicate and bring them down here. All right, so that's what I want to print. And these designs are things that I created and I will be selling on an upcoming Etsy shop that I'm planning on opening. But for right now, if you want these designs, um, I do have a Patreon 
and I have that link in the description and something that my patrons get um, for the top tier is they get a physical sticker every month so I will mail you a sticker. I'm going to be opening an Etsy shop pretty soon so stay tuned for that. So the next thing you want to do once you've got everything lined up the way you want it over here on the right where you had this square just hit the little eye to turn it off because we don't want to print the actual square. That's just to kind of help you figure out how much room you have to work with. And now this is the step that I was messing up with before. And this has been a game changer because when I tell you guys that I almost pulled my hair out, I almost broke this cricket. I almost took her and threw her out the window. I'm not exaggerating. Just ask my husband. Um, <laughs> I had a lot of issues and that's because I was doing something wrong here and my cuts were always messed up. So what you want to do is just, you can just drag with your mouse to select them all. You can also go over here to select them. Hit attach. Not flatten, but attach. I was hitting flatten and it was not working for me. Hit the attach button and then you're good to go. So now we're going to go over here to the green make it button in the upper right hand corner. All right, and then we're going to go to continue. Then up here, it should show your Cricut machine. Just make sure you have it turned on. It might take a minute. And then you want to hit send to printer. Now this step is important as well and something I've done a lot of trial and error on. So it's hard to give universal advice because everyone has a different printer and you know different settings for their printer but I just wanna show you what I do and hopefully that will help. So for me, it really is going to depend on the design, whether or not I add bleed. Usually I'd say a rule of thumb, I do not add bleed. I feel like it kind of messes with my cut and bleed is just there, you know, like it says here to kind of extend. So basically if you don't put a border around your design, it helps to kind of give it a border, but I put a border as we, you know, as we went over. I put a border around all my designs, so I usually don't put a bleed, but that really just depends on the design and it's a lot of trial and error. Something I always do 100% of the time is check this box, use system dialog, because then when you hit print, what that's going to do is bring up your actual menu on your computer for your printer. So you go to, you know, this is my printer and then I can go here to preferences. Again, your menu might look totally different. If you're on a Mac, it's going to look totally different. Depending on what kind of operating system you've got going on, your menu will look different. But for me, what I have found for me, the best setting universally is to just keep it on plain paper and do high quality. I used to try to mess with photo papers and matte and glossy and semi-gloss. And I found that for the best print quality, just all around, just plain paper and high. That works for me. And then we're going to hit print. This is the sticker paper that I use. I got it on Amazon and I will put a link in the description to this. Um, I absolutely love this. It is amazing quality. It is so, so soft and I have tested it. It is waterproof. It does say that it's water resistant. Some of these things say they're water resistant, but they're not, but this one really is. Um, I have a lot of these stickers on my, you know, cups and tumblers and stuff and they get wet when I wash them and I have no issues. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, ignore my dirty mat, is we're going to line up this sheet on our cutting mat. And that is what it should look like. Make sure it is lined up in the upper left-hand corner and then it goes straight across. Now what I'm gonna show you guys is something that, whew, this was the biggest headache for me. And that is getting the glossy finish on these stickers. Now, sometimes when you're selling a sticker, or you're making it for somebody, they really want that nice glossy finish. And it's very difficult to do with the Cricut because the Cricut hates glossy. It does not work. It is not compatible with glossy paper, but there's a workaround. And I'm going to link the YouTuber in the description who showed me how to do this and gave me this idea, shout out to her. But these are the Avery self-adhesive laminating sheets. These are incredible. So I do have a laminator, but if you use the laminator with this, it's going to laminate the whole thing. It's going to go all the way through. It becomes a huge headache when you're going to cut. It just takes a lot of time. You can do it, but it takes a lot of time. This is a lot cheaper anyway. 
So I got these on Amazon as well. I will put the link in the description. They go on sale pretty often and I got a pretty good price on these. So let me show you what to do next. Okay, so this is what the self-laminating sheet looks like. This is the shiny side, and then this is the backing. And what we're going to want to do, this is super important, is trim this. Because if this glossy part is over the black lines for the Cricut, it will not cut. The machine will not read it. That is my cat meowing in the background. Sorry about that. Hi, Bella. So what we're going to do is you can kind of see through it, especially when you hold it up to the light. You can see where that black line is. So what I do is just take a marker and I just make a mark and it does not have to be perfect. You just have to make sure that it's inside the black lines and covers the whole design. I'm actually gonna move this over just a little bit. So I'll just make a mark for where I wanna cut. And then I either use scissors or my paper trimmer and cut it. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so as you can see, I have trimmed down the self laminating sheet Again, just be sure that it does not go over those black lines because it will give you a headache <laughs> if it does. So now what you wanna do is you have to peel this backing off and lay this down and kind of spread out the air bubble. So I'm gonna do my best to show you how I do that. Okay, so what you're gonna do is just peel off this backing. And a lot of people say don't peel the whole thing off at one time, but you know what this works for me so <laughs> just make sure again that you put it inside of those black lines just press down in one spot and what you're going to want to do is take i have this little cricut one this came with like the cricut beginner tools thing you can buy these really anywhere online or at a craft store there's all different brands does not have to be cricut whatsoever and just kind of go down and this is what we do to try to avoid the air bubbles and really press it on there. And if you see some air bubbles, that's okay. You can get them out. And again, this is if you want that shiny effect on your stickers. Sometimes you don't. Um, for my planner stickers, I really like them to be matte. And so I'll just skip this whole step and just use this regular paper that I just printed on. That's what I use for all my planner stickers. But for die cuts and things that are going to go on you know, like cups and laptops and your phone and stuff. I really like to do this step because um, it gives it just a really nice finish. Again, shout out to the girl who showed me how to do this because when I tell y'all that whole glossy paper thing was a freaking nightmare, you have no idea. Okay, so now we're going to take this back over to the Cricut, load it in, and we're going to cut it. So as far as the setting that you want to choose for the Cricut, so first of all, I'm going to load the mat in there. Make sure it's under these two things very well. The setting that I find works the best for me is the poster board setting. Sorry for the cat hair and dust on here. Um, poster board for, again, this is for die cuts. So we want it to cut all the way through. Here's an example of, of a few here. So we want it to just cut all the way through. Um, and the poster board setting has worked good for me. And then we're just gonna hit the little C to start. All right, here's the part for the oddly satisfying channel to clip. Hey. Okay, I can't do this with one hand. All right, guys, and these are the finished stickers. I think they look really, really great. And these stickers were available for my patrons. Um, over at patreon.com slash planning with cash you can support the channel for as little as two dollars a month and um, the upper tier which is six dollars a month gets physical stickers in the mail every month um, but i am planning on so my patrons will always get my designs first um, i did draw these and this is obviously based on <laughs> the demolition lovers 2 art the three cheers for sweet revenge album cover by mcr i drew that and then I drew this moth, which is obviously inspired by Ellie's tattoo in The Last of Us Part Two. Um, but I am planning on opening an Etsy shop later this year for my stickers. I have a lot of uh, stock on hand now from, you know, just testing, um, doing trial and error, and printing out extras for patrons and things like that. I'm going to have some matte ones here. So I have a lot on hand, and I am planning on opening an Etsy shop. Let me know if you'd be interested. Um, and let me know if you have any comments questions, 
anything below um, in the comment section. I would really appreciate it. I hope this was helpful. I just wanted to take all the mistakes that I made and everything that I learned and share it with you guys. So I hope it was helpful. And uh, all the links to everything I talked about are in the description. And yeah, thank you. I will see you next time. Bye.